So actually, uh, Dr. Lorena did uh, inform me last week that uh, you guys will start for preparing gel. Start before kita start kita punya lab lah. Uh, akan buat preparing gel. And then I will continue with uh, our punya lab. Alright, which is the mitosis punya lab lah. So the main aim for kita punya mitosis lab ni adalah to uh, to understand ataupun to observe the phases of mitosis in real life, right? In real real situation where kita gunakan uh, the onion punya roots lah, root tips ni kita boleh tengok. Alright, so we try to do that and we observe under microscope lah. Alright, so we will do it uh, in pair. So we just continue it with uh, you guys punya grouping in previous previous week. Alright. Uh, and then uh, we see how things goes lah. InsyaAllah. Okay. So insyaAllah we'll invite as well Dr. Razik to assist us. But uh, Dr. Razik dia ada sedikit teknik yang dia nak uh, share with us to make the chromosome become more visible. Something like that lah. Okay. So the next thing that I need to inform is that that uh, if you guys have any uh, difficulties doing your assignments ataupun presentation, right, do communicate with me, alright, so ataupun through mask, uh, your class rep and so on, right, just let me know. InsyaAllah we try to understand your situation. Of course, uh, you guys have back-to-back -back punya laboratory, right, assignments as well, and as well as uh, uh, you guys punya preparation for presentation. Uh, so please do let me know and communicate lah, yeah. Okay, one last thing is that uh, I did ask last week, yeah, regarding kita punya mid-semester examination. So, uh, any final decision that we made? Nak buat sebelum raya ke nak buat sepah raya? Selepas. Selepas, eh? Ha. Everyone is agree with that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, yes. korang raya dululah, yeah, and then uh, a week after kita punya raya tu, we try to do it, uh, the semester examination, alright? So, agree with everyone, yeah. Nanti saya akan prepare for that lah. We'll inform Dr. Zarina as well on that. Okay, so, uh, just uh, ease your mind. Uh, have a uh, good relax. So, regarding my laboratory punya submission date, uh, so, I will discuss with Mas lah later. Okay, Mas? Okay, saya punya lab lah. Uh, sebab I think Dr. Zarina have dia punya due date because uh, when I see back with your punya schedule, you guys back to back punya uh, apa? laboratory. So, let let me check with that, uh, with the mass, with mass. Uh, so, to find a suitable date for you guys to submit your punya lab report. Okay. So, everyone is ready for today topics? Yes. Right? Okay. Can, can we start? All right. Thank you. Alright, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh everyone. Today we be uh, our week 6 punya discussion lah ya. Yeah. So, we have around 20 plus slides saja, But, we just more on banyak figures dan ada a few uh, a few gambar lah yang kita akan discuss lah. Alright. So, this is will be our our main uh, introduction. Alright. So, our topic for today is polyploid implants. Alright. So, I think if you guys know and you guys understand Right, plant is a living things, dan dia adalah static kat satu tempat sahaja. Right, they will not move elsewhere. Right, so once they are being planted in one particular areas, they will remain there for throughout their life lah. Right, melainkan kalau dia boleh menjala, so they have the punya ex ex expandency of uh, to moving out much. Tapi most of the plant, they are rooting plant, they will just remain in one particular place. Right, so. This is among maybe Allah punya, uh, not maybe, this is one of Allah punya creations, alright? They have this capacity and capability for for this particular organism, alright? For plants, right? To have the uh, extra chromosome yang dia boleh gain, yang dia boleh dapat. So, but uh, when they gain and they become uh, an extraordinary organism later. Alright, so this is where uh, with this capacity and capability of them, uh, human also not directly manipulate, but human understand the concept. So they are trying to do it uh, in visible way where it can occur naturally. Polypoly it can, it can it is occur naturally, but we also can trigger the polypoidy as well. So we can have more advantages on the particular organism yang kita nak lah. So they normally, as you guys understand lah, 
since early on kita punya topic right plant genetics ni so we talk about uh, how DNA sequence right they will be transcribed and translate into a protein just imagine if they have extra chromosome inside them right they will have extra sequence and they will of them definitely having extra protein kan so that's why they slightly bigger normally all right so that's why um, this with this capacity lah uh, it will be beneficial for human being all right to 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 use them lah <laughs> indirectly all right so this particular figures right, gambar ni all right so this is a contoh polyploid yang kita ada lah Alright, contoh polyploidy yang generally kita nampak uh, yang normally kita see alright and sometimes without realizing dia adalah polyploid punya uh, plants ataupun fruits yang kita ada alright so macam sebelah kanan alright is this more on uh, kentang tomatoes eh uh, potatoes alright so wild species you guys can see the two end kat bawah tu alright so this is normal tomatoes and there is a few hybrid Alright, and there are a few cultivar yang kita boleh nampak they have expand of dia punya uh, chromosome numbers kat dalam. So you can see from the figures, alright, the the structure ataupun dia punya features tu ataupun phenotype je lah, is much much more bigger compared to the original one. Alright, it can be induced kita boleh trigger kan dia punya polyploid ataupun it will happen naturally juga. So in this particular topic, we will talk about that lah. How polyploid it can happen, right? So how it been triggered, right? So what is uh, things yang ada di sekeliling kita ni and without realizing then they are polyploid organism, right? So of course, uh, sebelah kiri sekali, bulan-bulan puasa ni, right? You guys can see is watermelon, right? So biasa kita makan buah buah apa ni buah tembikai yang isinya biji dia kala hitam am i correct right so biji dia kala hitam so that is a seed yang kita normally ni lah kita akan ambil dan kita akan uh, try to apa nama planted them as well so dia kena jadi buah buah, buah tembikai balik lah right so i think uh, have you guys seen the white seeds watermelon you guys familiar with that yes Yes. Alright. So the white seeds watermelon ni, alright. White seed watermelon ni actually adalah dia adalah triploid watermelon. It's not a normal watermelon. Dia adalah triploid watermelon, alright. So dia adalah watermelon yang normally in commercial use, alright, in agriculture use. So they induce this kind of watermelon, alright. So it will remain ataupun retain dia punya uh, traits yang manis ni and so on. Supaya dia tak dia tak dia tak apa nama uh, cross breed among each other. Right. So you guys know about fertilization, remember? Undergo fertilization, undergo processing over and so on. So they can mix with the breed lah. So we do not, uh, some, apa nama, some farmers, right, they not maintain this particular breed yang ada, yang manis ni. So they just maintain and remain in that way. Alright. So they tak cross dan tak fertilize. So they, they maintain dia punya traits yang manis for example and so on. So they remain. So this can be induced. So we will talk about that as well. Alright, kita akan, I will give you some some theories on how the farmers utilize this. It's very few steps, around two, uh, one to four steps saja sedia buat this kind of things. Alright. And lastly, the middle one. Alright. Everyone knows about this lah. Familiar with buah pisang yang ada biji? Tak. <laughs> tak familiar? Alright. Buah pisang ada biji. Tak familiar? Ada tapi yang kecil je biji dia. Oh iya ke? Biji kat tengah tu kan? So actually uh, buah pisang, this biji-biji yang biji hitam buah pisang, people call it uh, pisang hutan ni. Alright? And to be frank with you, that is the original pisang. Alright? Pisang yang ada yang kita ada sekarang ni, dia adalah polyploid pisang. Right? The original pisang adalah this particular pisang. Alright? So this is the original pisang ada. Alright, so this is the pisang yang, yang asal and then they undergo polyploidy and they increase the size, right, shrinking the, apa nama, the seeds kat tengah, alright. So this is the pisang yang kita ada sekarang and commercial pisang yang kita ada sekarang. Andinabli dulu memang if you guys uh, balik kampung and so on, ada je yang bagi uh, pisang hutan ni and also it can be eaten as well, alright. So it's not as sweet as uh, pisang yang 
commercial right so uh, indirectly kita dah face right uh, polyploid organism in our life sebenarnya without we, we are realizing that right but actually polyploid sebenarnya right this is the topic we talk today lah about polyploid right and chromosome numbers and other characteristics lah kita akan bincang right so definition of polyploid is that Uh, the process of genome doubling that give rise to organism with multiple sets of chromosome. Alright, so I think we we, we talk about this uh, since last week, right? The alteration of generation, right? So uh, in plant they have uh, these particular phases, yang dia ada in the haploid punya form, right? Dengan then diploid punya form, alright? So normally haploid punya form ni they are in the form of gametes that can be apa nama undergo mitosis dia di one particular features, but for the more specialized uh, organism like angiosperms pokok yang berbunga ni alright in the haploid form dia adalah normally is for the gametes lah right and then for fertilization alright so just imagine this lah two copies of chromosome is called diploid lah so which mean it is the normal thing that we know right everything every living living things in any uh, most organism are in the diploid punya form lah except for certain certain features like macam plant tadi lah, alright? So, they mostly in the diploid form, alright? So, when they undergo the meiosis process, they will become haploid and then this is particular genes yang, uh, genes yang are exist pula, gamete yang akan di-fertilize, so they become diploid again, alright? So, what if the chromosome is become uh, raised in numbers, not just doubling, it's tripling in numbers, what you call it triploid lah, alright? And then, uh, four copies, you call it tetraploid. Tapi the issue is that, right, if you can see the figures dekat sini, right, if tetraploid, dia, dia double jadi empat lah, right, if they become haploid, right, if they become haploid, the haploid will be diploid. The haploid will be diploid. But if if the triploid, right, if they are triploid, there will be an issue for this particular organism, right? So they will not have any haploid punya Uh, structures ataupun haploid punya ni lah uh, haploid punya kromosom for them and normally the angka ganjil on the ploidy yang meningkat ni normally they will be sterile ataupun infertile ataupun tak subur lah so whenever they want to crossbreed they will be having any issues dia tak boleh nak breed right so uh, apart from yang nombor Genap, nombor genap, they have the diploid punya version and then when they have the diploid punya version, they can undergo fertilization process, right? So, this is the thing, right? If they are in the diploid punya form, they cannot be fertilized unless kalau dia jadi ni lah, hexaploid, right? Hexaploid ni jadi enam, so dia ada diploid ni adalah triploid. I mean, I mean, the half of them adalah dia punya triploid, alright? So, these are the thing yang kita kena tahu rule of the thumbs, right? yang thing yang kita familiar with, right? Kalau they are in the nombor ganjil, haploid version dia adalah nombor ganjil, I mean diploid version dia ada nombor ganjil, right? Double up dia ada nombor ganjil, so they will be having any issues for having a haploid version, alright? So having issue with the gametes lah, in short, right? So the gametes in diploid are haploid, those type haploid will be diploid and those hexaploid will be the triploid and so on, right? So this is the thing, alright? Definition, right? Polyploidy is common in nature, right? It provided a major mechanism of adaptation, right? And speci speciation, right? Speciation. But adaptation is adaptation. So, like I, like I said, uh, the plant, they cannot move much, right? They remain in one particular place. What they can do is that they adapt with the condition and environment, right? So, this is where they need to adapt and they it will be double up, doubling up dia punya chromosome numbers inside, right? Speciation ni pula adalah they undergo evolution, right? Speciation ni adalah undergo evolution to become a new being yang baru. Not directly they gain more, apa nama? More characteristics and more features by doubling up ataupun by increasing dia punya chromosome numbers, right? So this is where what polyploid can do for an organism. Right, they can be utilized as adaptation. Right, they can be utilized as uh, having more features or more characteristic characteristic on them. Right, and approximately around 50 to 70% of angiosperms. Right, which include many crops as well, 
undergo polyploidy throughout the punya evolutionary punya process. Right? The evolution lah. Right? So, banana, potato, strawberry, orange, grape, mustard. And most of them ada polyploidy. Right? So, of course, uh, of course, this kind of thing yang kita nak discuss dan kita nak belajar lah. Alright? In our next chapter, next week lah. So, of course, this thing can happen naturally. Uh, kita akan tertanya-tanya lah what happened to the wild type, the original type of them. Alright? The original type of that particular organism, what will happen? Adakah dia akan menghilang and so on. So, this kind of thing yang kita kena faham dan kita kena, apa nama? learn on how to preserve them. Alright? So, the thing that I need to highlight to everyone as well is that the original uh, organism, alright? Organism yang asal, kita panggil the wild type. Alright? Kita panggil the wild type. So, if they undergo mutation, we call them mutation. Alright? So, if they undergo genetic modified, call it uh, adalah uh, GM punya organism. Alright? But we normally remain the original state ataupun phase of the organism we call it wild type type yang asal sekali kita jumpa alright so ataupun kebanyakan kita jumpa lah alright so this is uh, in quite important for our next incoming punya laboratory session lah alright remember that wild type okay so what factors can in, can trigger the polyploidy sebenarnya alright what factors alright so dia kita ada around 5 factors lah to be exact we got 5 factors alright so, one of them adalah spontaneous somatic chromosome duplication. Alright. So, this can either occur in zygote or to produce completely polyploid individual in pure vegetative apunia tissues. Right. So, in short, in short ni adalah whenever, alright, whenever the chromosome ni. Right. So, remember they, they want to do the undergo cell division and so on. They increase, they duplicate the numbers terlampau banyak. I mean, banyak. Right. So, they increase the numbers of them. So, they, this is, this can occur spontaneous. Alright. They tak ada induce, they tak ada trigger, they, they just happen naturally lah. Alright. It's spontaneous. Benda yang akan tiba-tiba berlaku, spontaneous things happen. Alright. So, this is the thing. Alright. This is uh, being, being studied and this is being researched. Or it can happen through this. Alright. Spontaneous chromosome duplication. Increase the numbers of the chromosome inside. Alright. So, the next one adalah non-reduction in meiosis. Alright? Remember, meiosis dia jadi haploid. Remember? In meiosis, dia akan jadi haploid version. However, due to uh, some error in meiosis punya proses. Alright? Remember when they are aligned in the equatorial. Alright? When they align in the equatorial, supposedly half of them will move to the other poles. Remember? Alright? However, non-reduction in myosis which means that they will not happen in half. So, when they are in the equatorial, they is not moving to one particular side. Right? So, they just move on one side saja. They tak move separately. So, they pergi one side saja, and then this is what happened. So, leaving one cell without any chromosome and the other cell double up the chromosome, especially in meiosis. So, these are the things that can happen and can trigger the polyploidy as well. Right? It can happen due to the environment factors or several factors. But uh, what happened in the myosis, it happened in myosis. Right? Is a particular error kita boleh, kita boleh, kita boleh induce lah sebenarnya. We talk about that afterwards. Alright? Polyspermati. So, this is straightforward. Alright? One egg being fertilized by two sperms together so which means that they have are uh, having extra chromosome indirectly through the fertilization process all right so the next one is a uh, endo replication all right this is almost similar like uh, meiosis just now all right almost similar like non reduction in meiosis but this one during the cytokinesis process remember the mitosis process they undergo cell division all right so it samples like meiosis just now they tak pergi in one particular pole, right? Coming them become increase in number of mitosis eh, and a number of chromosome in one one particular cells, right? Ni dia jadi banyak dan banyak, right? So they will have a extra chromosome in one side and no much chromosome, not to reduce the number of chromosome, no chromosome in one particular cell. 
right? So, they will not undergo cytokinesis process. They just double up dia punya number saja. Okay, banyak. Alright? So, they will not undergo cell division. Alright? So, dia tak berbelah dua lah. They replicate dia punya themselves. Alright? They, tak, they go to the equatorial. Alright? But they do not move on one side. Just remain in the middle. Alright? So, causing them having a large number of chromosome inside. Alright, dia tak ada pergi kiri dan kanan. Dia just nombor on chromosome increase. Dia on particular side saja. Alright. Last but not least is artificially induced treatment by the drugs and so on. Like called chisins. Alright. So, this is another thing yang saya cakap ni. We can induce. If we can induce the non-reduction in meiosis and we also can induce the endoreplication as well. Alright. So, depending dengan the type of cell that you guys are targeting for. Kalau meiosis punya cell, is more on the gamet punya cell. Alright, sex, sex cells. And this one, uh, and this one is in the normal cells. Alright, uh, what happened is the culture scene is that when you induce, when you treat to the cell, what happened adalah dia akan ganggu the spindle fiber. Remember the spindle fiber, the kinetic core that will move, uh, apa nama, uh, the chromosome to each of the sites. Remember that last week, kita, kita borak. So, what happened adalah calcisi ni, dia akan mantikan spindle, spindle fiber tersebut. So, leaving them cannot move to one side ataupun they will just move, dia ada terganggu movement dia. Right? So, this is where they will happen. Right? And the replication, they increase numbers and then this is non-reduction, dia tak reduce. Pergi kat sebelah, just remain. Right? So, this is what happened inside. We can trigger them artificially. And with this trigger artificial ni, this is where kita boleh uh, the farmers lah, farmers normally lah, dia akan buat this kind of thing. Dia uh, akan trigger the polyploidy. Remember the uh, watermelon just now. Uh, these are the solution yang normally dia akan gunakan untuk trigger the formation of uh, polyploid in the watermelon. Right? So, there are two types of polyploidy, right? The auto polyploid and allo polyploid. The key point here is that auto polyploid, they multiple the basis of the set chromosome within the punya similar species. Alright? Allo polyploid ni pula, they increase the punya numbers of chromosome cross species. Species number one is it. Alright? What normally happen adalah auto polyploid lah. Auto polyploid ni, they just increase due to the, apa nama, Uh, somatic uh, cell uh, undivide, so spontaneous uh, apa nama, somatic cell punya increase, ataupun uh, they are not undergo uh, cytokinesis just now alright, so they can increase dia punya numbers dekat dalam tu sendiri alright however in the auto allo polyploid, alright, they will fuse with the genes ataupun chromosome from different species Right, dia datang daripada spesies yang berbeza, they will fuse and they will gain extra features from the different species tu. But when we talk about that, don't worry. Let's first talk about the autopolyploid lah. Alright, containing the multiple copies of the basic set chromosome in the same genome or the same species. The key point of autopolyploid is adalah same species. Species yang sama. Alright, so we have put kentang just now, potato just now they increase the number of themselves, uh, the chromosome of themselves dekat dalam. So, they, that's why they ada extra protein features. So, they become slightly bigger compared to the normal one. Alright. So, occurs naturally through union of unreduced gamut, for example. Alright. So, this is the process there. Alright. <coughs> Autopolyploid. Just imagine we have two end organism. Organism yang biasa kita ada lah. Alright. Two end organism. This is organism yang biasa. What happen adalah they under they have the mitotic error lah. Either the spontaneous uh, apa endoreplication ke spontaneous uh, reduction ataupun spontaneous uh, replication and so on. This is due to mitotic errors. What happen adalah they will not undergo meiosis process ataupun they undergo meiosis process, right? So they will not become half ataupun they will not become haploid, right? Supposedly to end, right? To end if they are in haploid version, they should be have three set, three chromosome here, right? Three chromosome in here and three chromosome here. So, when they undergo fertilization balik, they akan jadi 
6 ataupun jadi hexaplot balik lah. Alright. So, however, in this particular process, alright, due to the metatic, metatic error, okay, so the chromosome is not reduced into half. Both of them is not reduced into half. Alright. When, when they undergo fertilization process, alright, so they remain the hexaploid punya chromosome. So, what happened adalah what happened adalah dia akan increase the number of chromosome total dekat dalam. 6, 6 bergambung dengan 6. So, dia akan jadi 12. Of 12, uh, 12 chromosome lah. 6 sets of 6. 6 sets of chromosome. Initially, dia ada 3 sets of chromosome lah. So, dia akan jadi 6 sets of chromosome dekat dalam. So, they increase the numbers ataupun they double up the punya numbers dekat dalam. Alright, so that's why from the initial one, they are normal organism, but through this particular error and the undergo fertilization process, they will become new organisms, right? So specialization, specialization, right? So which they have extra features, especially the extra protein, right? Towards the end, this is what happened. They will become polyploid organism. Alright, some uh, this is the process, straightforward new process. Alright, so due to, to some errors, alright, the G, apa, the gametes to undergo fertilization process, they are not in reduced punya form, alright, so they, they become polyploid organism. So this is within the species, alright. So this is the example lah, macam saya cakap tadi, alright, the seedless watermelon, macam mana kita nak buat. Right, uh, since we understand the auto polyploid, so let's talk a little bit about this. It's very simple process. All right, the key point is that they will fertilize. All right, they will fertilize tetraploid, tetraploid watermelon. Okay, tetraploid watermelon. They will breed them together with the normal watermelon, the diploid watermelon. That is the key. There. All right. So what happened is first they will treat the calcicin. All right, they will treat the calcicin. Alright, they will treat the calcicin dekat the newly emerged tips. Remember, the shoots, uh, the shoots yang ada dekat uh, plant yang awal-awal tu adalah di pucuk-pucuk tu dia dekat situ dia akan berlaku apa nama uh, proses untuk perbuatan. Uh, they will, they will grow become, they will, they will develop into flowers. Right, so this is where the initial step dia akan, dia akan apply the calcicin at the normal punya watermelon. They got deployed shoot tips, normal shoot tips. So when they are developing, growing, this particular tip will become tetraploid. Right? It's because though of the, remember, they can ganggu spindle fiber, right? So they just not moving to one side. So the cell will become an increased number of chromosomes. So this is the tetraploid plant. So what happened adalah, this particular tetraploid punya plant, okay, they really did have the bunga, Right, dia dia ada bunga. Sorry. Linear with the normal tetraploid and normal diploid punya watermelon. Right, dia akan fertilize with the normal diploid watermelon. Okay, this is fertilized with normal diploid watermelon. Okay. okay, so remember tetraploid, right, when they undergo fertilization process, they will undergo meiosis process. The tetraploid become haploid, become the diploid punya gametes. Right, what happened to the diploid punya uh, plants? When they undergo fertilization, they will produce a haploid version of them. That, right, they will produce haploid saja. So the diploid of the 4N and the haploid of the 2N will fertilize together. So, the diploid plant, polynet, cetraploid plant and give rise to the triploid punya seeds. Alright. Dekat 4N punya plant ni, dia akan tumbuh dan dia akan, dia akan keluar seeds dekat this particular flower lah. So, the seeds yang keluar dekat flower ni still boleh grow. Alright. They still boleh grow and then they will planted them. Alright. They will be planted them. Kenapa dia boleh grow? Sebabkan they will, they undergo normal fertilization process. Alright, so ini adalah parent dia. Parent dia adalah tetraploid, 
the other one adalah diploid so they are the triploid individual sekarang so they still can grow they still can grow dia boleh tumbuh macam biasa however remember i did mention just uh, early on right normally kalau individual yang dalam angka ganjil dia adalah infertile right dia boleh grow tetapi seeds yang dihasilkan adalah seed yang tidak subur dia tak boleh ditanam balik lah. ha, awak tanamlah yang yang seed skala putih tu dia tak akan grow they will remain as it is right so seeds yang ada daripada triploid punya organism ni dia adalah infertile right dia adalah infertile tetapi dia still boleh keluarkan buah right so what happen adalah this particular uh, triploid individual just now right they will be stimulate right by the pollen punya process they will stimulate the fertilization lah when they stimulate the fertilization of course the two end just now right kalau they stimulate dia hantar pollen what happen adalah they are in the haploid punya version so, so the haploid of gamete ni akan fertilize dia punya flower dekat triploid individual what happen dekat triploid individual they cannot provide Uh, haploid gamet ataupun X dekat dalam tetapi they can uh, this particular fruit fruit uh, fruit producing process ni remember fertilization of angiosperm last week kita bit borak when they have some fertilization occurs alright dia undergo pollen tube dia dah dah apa nama dia dah masuk ke dalam ovule remember the apa nama the generative cell will become sperm cell which they will fertilize the egg yang ada dekat dalam tapi egg tu adalah infertile egg tak berlaku tetapi this process happen right so the right the plant recognize the process of fertilization happen so that's why they will cover up all the seeds with all the nutrients with the hormone in way they will produce the fruit dia akan keluarkan, dia akan tumbuh jadi fruit lah, jadi buah. So, which mean that the the, the farmers, right? the farmers, they use this particular understanding, right? Right, and manipulate uh, the infertile ataupun manipulate the triploid punya pokok tadi untuk produce this type of food uh, ataupun fruits yang color merah. I mean, the watermelon with the white acid color, right? they can retain this particular ni they can retain this particular triploid punya plant ni dia boleh retain dan lama dan lama dan lama without they change dia punya uh, apa nama they change dia punya traits ataupun phenotype dia remain as there is right so dia tak ada mixture of uh, genes yang akan berlaku so this is what uh, farmers did lah same goes with uh, others like uh, uh, grape yang you guys makan right grape ataupun navel orange yang you guys makan juga we, we call it uh, adalah seedless grape ataupun seedless orange and so on same goes with uh, watermelon we call it seedless watermelon even though kita mesti nampak dia punya whitish color of dia punya seeds tu alright so this is the process yang digunakan oleh most of the farmers first they deploy their plant producing the Uh, triploid punya individual and this triploid punya individual need to be fertilized right to trigger dia punya fruit formation and then this fruit formation form with the seeds that is in that is infertile right so you guys can read dekat situ lah saya dah explain the process in general tadi right so dia ada four steps saja the triploid we deploy Fertilized, produce triploid punya individual, triploid punya individual, triggered by uh, diploid punya individual for fertilization and produce the seedless watermelon, infertile seeds. Alright, any questions before we go further? Ada soalan? No. No. Alright, no. I proceed lah ya. Alright. So, let's go for early polyploid. Allo polyploid ni is uh, more on macam kita borak tadi lah. Auto polyploid within the species. But allo polyploid between different species. Right? One species A. Right? Species A is dia punya main. Dia dapat kromosom daripada species B, kromosom daripada species C ataupun kromosom daripada species D. 
right? So dia ada banyak banyak kromosom kat dalam. So how the people know they have this kind of kromosom? So that's why they trace back the kromosom ni datang daripada mana. So they can trace back dia punya ancestor lah. So that's why one particular uh, pokok yang, ataupun plant yang kita ada sekarang, if we can trace back all the genetics make up them, some of them are coming from the mix of several species. Alright, we will talk about that after this. Alright, so how it occurs? Alright, you can see from here lah. This is a schematic diagram on what a low polyploid could, how a low polyploid could occurs. Alright, imagine uh, species A, alright, undergo mitotic error, similar like yang macam kita buat dekat auto, poly, auto, auto polyploid tadi, alright. So when undergo mitotic errors, they have see, uh, unreduced gamete. Right, they are the unreduced gamete. Right, what happened? They remain in the deployed punya version. Right, the gamete will remain in deployed punya version. Right, so what happened adalah another species, species B. Right, species B will have the punya haploid version. Right, they will undergo normal meiosis, a meiosis process. They produce the punya haploid version. Right, due to the environmental factors. Right, due to environmental factors, these two species will hybrid the chromosome. Will, I mean, fuse the punya chromosome. This gamete, all right? The gamete species A and gamete species B will fuse, all right? Together, forming one new individual. All right? All right? One new, one new individual uh, of gametes, uh, individual, but one new uh, organism, uh, uh, one new organism uh, with gametes on this, all right? What happened adalah when this individual, alright, uh, try to uh, undergo fertilization process, right? So they undergo mitotic error lagi sekali, right? So they become unreduced gamete. Okay, they tak reduce gamete. And what happened? They will uh, undergo uh, fertilization process between two of them, right? So they towards the end, they will become a mix chromosome from two different species yang ada. Alright? So, don't worry. It looks like macam apa nama? It's being made up and so on. But, these things occurs. Alright? This process memang berlaku. Alright? This is why they give this particular example. Uh, this is a very famous example actually in the present in the textbook. Alright? So, this is two different uh, organism that can have two different, uh, they can have both chromosome in one particular single organism. Alright, so the key here adalah, alright, when they undergo fertilization process, uh, series of, of unreduced uh, gamete berlaku, alright, and berlaku juga hybrid ataupun fuse of the gametes, and then they return back to undergo fertilization process again, and then they, they gain this particular organism baru kat dalam. Alright, so we can trace back lagi sekali lah. So, kalau biru, undergo unreduced gamete. Alright, they will have the uh, unreduced gamete lah in the diploid punya form. Alright, species B pula, they produce the gamete in haploid punya form. However, due to the environment factor factors, these two gamete fuse together, alright, having the seven chromosome inside them. Alright, so in this particular seven chromosome, they will undergo they, they become a new individual lah, right? So what happened adalah when they undergo new fertilization process, remember seven chromosome ni is, is infertile, right? So what happened adalah they will produce, uh, undergo mitotic error, they will produce this particular seven gametes juga. And then they meet with the normal individual with the three gametes yang biasa, which is complementing to them, right? They have seven chromosome. And then they will fuse together undergo fertilization process, then they will become 10 sets, apa, uh, uh, 5 sets of chromosome, alright, 10 chromosome inside. And this is become fertile balik lah. So, dekat sini, dia tak fertile dekat tengah-tengah ni, dia jadi infertile individual. But they produce the unreduced gamete. They not, uh, they not directly undergo normal haploid ataupun meiosis process. They will fuse together. Nampak macam a little bit confusing, but don't worry. Let me show you these particular features. Alright. So, this is exactly what happened in these particular figures. Alright. So, ini adalah 
contoh paling uh, is a real example of gandum yang kita ada sekarang ni. Alright, gandum yang kita ada sekarang ni. So, it's, it's actually it's not makanan ruji kita lah. Tapi uh, wheat ataupun gandum ni adalah makanan ruji for the westerners lah. So, that's why when they when they try to study back, alright, the triticum astivum ni, alright, nama dia adalah triticum lah, alright, triticum astivum ni, yang ada sekarang ni, this one, yang gandum yang digunakan sekarang ni dekat most of western country ataupun uh, Middle East, right, so ini adalah coming from three different species yang ada. Right, what happens sebenarnya yang berlaku, apa yang berlaku sebenarnya. So, they have these two particular thing lah, right, they have the triticum monococum, right, so this is the Uh, early early phase of uh, the wheat alright so why triticum members right so this dua benda ni adalah satu dia yang biasa right so what happened to both of them right they have the gametes yang ada right they produce the haploid but this particular haploid ni fuse together alright they fuse together having that they become the uh, apa nama two spe one species one new species right with apa nama uh, with extra chromosome from different species ni adalah asal daripada asal right daripada asal and this particular fuse of gamete becoming the triticum trigidum right the triticum trigidum right so they will become this particular individual Titicum tergidum. So what happen dekat sini? Titicum tergidum. Alright, dia adalah ha, dia adalah asal daripada Titicum monococum dengan triti, wild triticum dekat atas. Alright. So senang cerita ni adalah species A yang species B lah. Saya akan gunakan yang species A dan species B. Alright. So due to the uh, environmental factors, time punya factors as well, they hybrid together. Alright. So dia punya gamet hybrid together and then this gamet uh, apa dia, develop into a new individual call it triticum tergidum which is the individual yang baru lah because they having these two different mechanism baru but what happen dekat triticum tergidum alright what happen adalah due to mitotic error ataupun cell division error they somehow producing the gamete that will be hybridized ataupun fused with the another individual called triticum toshi right this is another individual uh, kita call it d lah with the example lah right so this organism producing their punya gamete and this particular gamete somehow fuse together to produce new individual right this particular individual yang baru ni is called triticum astigum yang ada sekarang ni right so this is where the process occurs two different species yang asal right these two species uh, if you not mistaken one of them adalah rumput if you not mistaken can remember which one right dia adalah uh, grass 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 right so maknanya asal-asal ni dia tak ada properties of the flower ataupun properties of the wheat flower tu dia tak ada gisi gandum sebenarnya but due to this particular mixture right due to the mixture ataupun undergo polyploid of gaining uh, apa nama haploid ataupun gaining the chromosome from different species ni this is what make them up they become the wheat ataupun gandum yang kita tahu sekarang right so these are the things yang ada right when they undergo hybridization process they produce the sterile punya chromosome and they produce chromosome yang ada and this particular chromosome undergo cell division Uh, uh, this particular chromosome undergo cell division error and cell fertilization increase the punya numbers of chromosome balik lah right because of the gamete so they become diploid balik bila diploid balik they produce the punya haploid right ketika dia punya haploid and individual D pula dia produce the punya haploid they hybridize balik together A, B and D with this particular hybridization term fuse lah so they become individual yang ada tiga chromosome Right, this particular tiga chromosome tu, they will undergo cell division error and cell fertilization two times juga. And they double up the punya chromosome numbers and this is what happen. They become the triticum astivum. The wheat bread yang kita ada sekarang ni. Alright, 
it looks complex but you guys can uh, look at them in general just try to understand tak perlu memorize just just enough for you guys to understand this individual a individual b right so what happened adalah this individual a and then go meiosis uh, individual d and then go meiosis somehow dia punya gamet fuse together alright uh, sebab kenapa sih kita panggil cheese ataupun hybridize sebab normally two different species dia tak boleh fertilize alright so what happened in this particular phase adalah just imagine eh just imagine that this the situation like this lah remember pollen pollen tu boleh dikit angin alright so remember the pollen when this particular pollen can fly ataupun they move to one plant to another due to the environment punya factors they will melekat dekat salah satu enter dekat mana-mana lah alright of different species what happen adalah dia adalah bentuk gamet and then when they enter this particular species dia adalah bentuk gamet juga so somehow they fuse this particular chromosome dekat apa yang dia ada lah they fuse so this is where what making them of course it cannot open uh, occurs naturally but it can, uh, of course it cannot happen uh, it can happen naturally but it cannot happen in a very short period of time just imagine uh, constant lah. Pollen tu memang selalu datang, 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 datang kat situ. And then, one day, they just accept and fuse in them together. So, they, when they fuse, they become the new individual. Alright? So, what happened? When you become new individual ni, they still, they still in the normal chromosome. But, they undergo uh, self-replication of chromosome kat dalam. They become increase in the chromosome number. They become new individual of particular to gym, which is the mixed, uh, mixed organism. And things happen jugalah dengan D and so on until today. So, this is where you become the uh, wheat yang kita ada sekarang. Alright. In short sebenarnya, allopolyploid ni, they gain dia punya chromosome ni from different species through a complex punya process. Alright. So, this is what happen to them. This is much more uh, complex compared to autopolyploid. Autopolyploid, they might increase the number sendiri dekat dalam badan. Right, autopolyploid ni is coming from different species. But it will take time. It happen through time. It tak akan berlaku dalam masa seminggu, dua minggu, tiga minggu. No. It happen times. But this is what people understand. And this is what people studies. Alright, so this is a very, very good example of that. Sebenarnya ada lagi kapas yang kita ada sekarang. It's not directly kapas yang ada sekarang lah. So, they do due to the polyploid juga. Kalau polyploid. So, this is the kapas yang kita ada sekarang. Alright. So, little bit tricky but uh, I give you time, you guys time later. You guys see the slide. Check, tengok balik what happened to them. Oh, this is what happened. Alright. So, the next one adalah, so this is become uh, more leisure lah. Kita akan borak sikit-sikit and so on. So, adakah polyploid ni happen in, in, in animals? Alright. So, macam kita borak tadi normally happen in plants in early on sebab plant ni tak boleh adapt dan tak boleh bergerak ke tempat mana-mana so dia adapt with the particular condition and situation so dia ada rumours ataupun dia being discussed lah about uh, some species yang ada lah uh, right, some species yang ada uh, such as um, salamander, goldfish salmon and so on tapi uh, the most uh, people are talking about this uh, one particular species lah, this particular species apa nama dia? Uh, can you remember the the name is uh, Visa Charet, yes, in South America, alright? So don't worry, you guys can read sini, tapi this I just want to summarize what are the things that people are talking about, alright? So, di jarang-jarang kita jumpa lah uh, ada higher polyidy in other organisms compared to plant. There are a few as being reported, such as this kind of ni lah such as this kind of species, fish charret and some ikan, salmon if not mistaken, yang ada juga polyidy berbeza, alright. Tetapi, alright, uh, there is merely more on uh, discussion and plus fish charret ni adalah uh, people are discussing this particular species, alright. Adakah dia betul tetraploid ataupun uh, adakah is just more on merely evolution of uh, the red themselves yang berubah due to adaptation and so on. However, there is no known uh, apa nama solid information on other organisms that have higher ploidy 
compare to the original one apart from the plants. Alright, memang ada discussion on that. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there's some in the salmon as well, right? Uh, in, in fact, uh, kita ada Department of uh, Marine dekat sini and one of them ada Dr. Fitri. Dr. Fitri dulu, they, 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 buat, they, they study in Japan. They study regarding salmon punya polyploid. Uh, they, they, they induce. I mean, it not occurs naturally, it induce the polyploid dekat the salmon. Right, macam kita induce yang dekat watermelon just now lah. So, there is no non uh, direct that happen naturally on the other organisms apart from this uh, particular bisa caret ni. Alright? And uh, some of the fish people are talking about. Tapi, that still under under research, under studies as for now. But no no solid uh, discussion, uh, no, solid, no solid results on that yet. But discussion tu in heat lah memang banyak. Tapi, as, as not strong as uh, plant yang ada polyploid ni, ada organism ni, is very hard to find. Tapi ke dalam plant, is very easy to find of them because of their punya uh, adaptation punya process. This is the I did mention early on Allah punya apa nama uh, kuasa Allah they give rise to this particular organism such as plant eh, to have the expand capability to apa nama untuk menerima extra chromosome dalam dia punya badan. Alright apart from uh, other organisms such as uh, fish, uh, amphibians, and human beings, ataupun mammals lah, short, right? So, they tak ada, not directly, they may be ada, probably ada, but uh, it's not as uh, as easy as we can observe things that happen in plants, alright? But it still remain in discussion lah, alright? But however, however many mammals have polyploid cell in their punya organs lah, but not all the chromosome yang ada uh, polyploid ni. That, that make up uh, things lah. Macam macam plant ni. Sebab plant ni when they accept, uh, accept the chromosome tu, they have the chromosome, they increase terus punya capacity expansion. So far kita tak jumpa sebab among the features of the polyploid is that the punya body mass increase, increase and increase lah. And the new offspring. So like, we not see this kind of things in animals, uh, in animals like mammals, fish and so on. Alright? Of course lah, uh, the discussion with Dr. Fitri, the salmon, uh, the polyploid salmon tu memang dia increase in size lah. Tapi, that is more on uh, being induced in early end during the egg punya phase, if you're not mistaken. Alright? So, next one. So, this is what we call it lah. Sterility tadi just now. If they are in the uh, ganjil ataupun uneven numbers of the punya uh, original organism if they are in the uh, uneven numbers ataupun nombor ganjil or the punya chromosome so they will having an issue to have a gametes on their own so this is normally we call it uh, apa nama sterile punya ni lah organism that cannot produce offspring right this is the last part don't worry uh, give me five minutes and we end this particular session lah alright So, class of polyploid, kita ada euploidy dan kita ada new, a neuploidy. Alright, so monoploidy is loss of entire set of chromosome lah, dia hilang terus. Alright, and euploidy, entire set of chromosome is being duplicate right? ataupun several times lah. This is what we learned just now. Alright, autopolyploid dengan allopolyploid. They increase the whole sex. However, they are occurs juga uh, a neuploidy, the abnormality of condition where chromosome, a normal set yang kita ada, dia ada hilang salah satu ataupun increase salah satu. Alright, for example, uh, remember we have uh, 20 sets, 26 sets of chromosome. Alright, 23 sets of chromosome, sorry. 23 sets of chromosome. Just imagine chromosome number 23 adalah kita punya sex chromosome. Remember that. Eh? Right, just imagine uh, let's say chromosome number 20, tiba-tiba hilang satu, satu set boleh hilang satu. So, this is, the, this is the condition we call it aneuploidy lah. Ataupun, uh, chromosome number 20 tu tiba-tiba dia bertambah jadi tiga chromosome. Alright, it could happen juga. So, this is the case of aneuploidy. The case of euploidy tu adalah the whole sets being increased ataupun reduced lah. But, aneuploid is one of one of one of the sets tu akan bertambah ataupun berkurang. 
Alright. So this condition, uh, what we call is that if they say loss of both pair, we call it nullisomic. Alright. So monosomic adalah the loss of single chromosome from the pair. Right. Trisomic adalah they gain extra from one from of the pair jadi tiga. Tetrasomic they gain jadi empat. They become tetrasomic. So nullisomic, monosomic, trisomic dengan tetrasomic. So these are the term yang kita gunakan lah. Kalau dihilang salah satu, tambah salah satu, and so on. Alright. So this could happen because of the non-disjunction punya process lah. Failure of pair chromosome to separate. Alright. During the cell division, so both chromosome go to one daughter cell and not go into the other cell. So this is what happen. Alright. So first non-disjunction non adalah sini lah. Dia tak terpisah dua. Alright. Bila dia tak terpisah dua, what happen adalah they will continue ke bawah. So what happen adalah when they continue ke bawah, normal disjunction, alright, so they will be having this kind of chromosome ke bawah. Alright, dia ada trisomic, trisomic. This one will become monosomic, tak ada chromosome langsung. Adalah jadi satu saja. Alright, same goes with this one as well, alright. Kalau dia ber continue, this will be having the issues. Alright, this is normal disjunction. So, dia akan dapat trisomic, normal one. So, second division, non-disjunction, non alright? Satu akan dapat dua, satu ni adalah satu saja. Dia akan dapat, uh, this jadi tiga, alright? So, this adalah block gamet lah. Ini yang kita cakap tadi early on, alright? Let's say dia berlaku macam ni, gamet dia, dia, dia tak boleh nak, apa nama, fertilize more each other. So, you just bagi one haploid saja kat dalam. So, what happens kat sini adalah, dia jadi, Uh, bila dia undergo non-disjunction ni this be remain the haploid tu tak berkurang alright tapi dia bertambah dengan another haploid coming from one parents alright so this one jadi trisomic and this one jadi monosomic alright so same thing happen kat sini lah disomic di sini lagi lagi clear lah untuk awak tengok alright so this is coming from different parents this is coming from one parents alright The orange is coming from different parents. The blue is coming from different parents. What happen adalah this thing lah. Kalau dia berlaku dekat sini, they will have one haploid and the gamete can fertilize together. They become diisomic, normal one. For here pula, oh, sorry, for here, alright. So when they have the non-disjunction, non they remain the haploid in one particular cell. When they undergo fertilization, they will gain extra chromosome here. Yeah. So, alright. So, what happened adalah, I give you a direct example is that trisomic 21. Trisomic 21. This is an chromosome number 21. They will have extra chromosome. So, this is what we call is uh, trisomy lah. Nolisomic, hilang semua. Alright. Monosomic, dia jadi tinggal satu. Alright. Trisomic ni bertambah satu. So what happen adalah in trisomic ni Down syndrome. This is what we call it Down syndrome. Trisomic 21 is known as a Down syndrome process. And Down syndrome uh, individual. So I, I believe everyone knows what is Down syndrome. Alright. So this is what happen. They undergo a new a new ploidy where they gain one extra chromosome in the chromosome pairs. So in this specific case, they gain extra chromosome in chromosome number 21. So that's why Down syndrome, sometimes they are called, they are called as a trisomy 21 punya condition. Alright. So another thing adalah uh, Turner syndrome. Alright. Turner syndrome ni, uh, they monosomy. Alright. They, which means they hilang satu chromosome, especially on the sex cells. Alright. So they tak ada, uh, they tak ada, genes lelaki, I mean the Y chromosome dia tak ada. So, what, so this is what we call as monosomy lah. Monosomy 46. Alright, ataupun monosomy 23 lah. Kita ada. Alright, so this is where uh, things happen. Dia akan hilang one of the chromosome. So this is also considered as a, uh, it's not this is a condition where an individual become a, a Turner syndrome lah. You, what is Turner syndrome? you can try to find it by yourself, right? So this is condition where uh, they become, uh, kita tak panggil dia kecatat, 
kecatatan, kecatatan. Alright. So this is the condition of the patient. Alright. Or what happened due to the kehilangan part of the punya kromosom yang ada. Alright. So I guess that's all for the today. Alright. So any questions before kita end kan today? Hello everyone. No, no, no questions. All right. If you guys have any question, do let me know. Uh, we have the laboratory this evening. We will start at two, and kita can start with the gel preparation lah, and then we just continue kita punya observation of mitosis, inshallah. Okay. So I'm so sorry to take uh, around nine, ten minutes of your time lah, because on the explanation parts lah. All right. So 